Welcome to Europe ECR 2023. My name is uh, Davide Capodanno. I'm very pleased uh, today to uh, talk with uh, Lennart Corradi and uh, we talk about multivessel disease. And it's not by chance that uh, an interventional cardiology uh, discuss with a surgeon, although maybe we miss a third person, uh, a clinical cardiologist, uh, because this is the our team as we conceive today. Yeah. Uh, so with multivessel disease, we have many challenges, uh, Leonard, and uh, one of the challenges is, first of all, um, do we really need uh, invasive coronary angiography? Of course, multivessel disease is defined by coronary angiography or CT, but sometimes don't you feel that we rush too much to an anatomic assessment, even in the mildly asymptomatic uh, or uh, symptomatic patients? Absolutely, I agree completely. You know, uh, the times where we should rush to invasive diagnosis, uh, those are somehow over, I think. Um, what we've learned from the more recent study in literature is accumulating data that we can take our time, we can assess, we can look for symptoms, very importantly, uh, before we run into diagnostics. Yes, yeah, something that we have learned from these uh, revived uh, ischemia yeah. orbital studies is that we should really tackle the symptoms of the patients rather than the ischemia per se. And we have so uh, incredible drugs that can help us to relieve the ischemia and in the end uh, make the most for, uh, for the patient. And of course then uh, if you do coronary angiography and you have this multivessel disease presentation without a clear culprit, so when it's an ACS, it's obvious we should revascularize. When it's a CCS, it's more nuanced. But let's say that we want to revascularize these patients. Who is for PCI and who is for cabbage? Tell us the surgical perspective. Well, the easy way out, the easy answer would always be it has to be a hard team-based uh, uh, individualized decision. But on the other hand, I think there's uh, abundant data now that the complexity of the disease go is an important driver towards surgical technique maybe, whereas, you know, more uh, simple forms, according to uh, quantification scores, like the syntax score, for example, might be more eligible to PCI. Now, having said that, I think there is a lot more to the story because, as I said in the beginning, it needs to be individualized. There may very well be a person or an, a patient with highly complex coronary disease who might be more eligible for PCI, for other clinical uh, parameters. Maybe he's uh, comorbid ridden, things like that. Whereas um, young patients, with, um, well, when they're well informed, might also benefit from surgical revascularization, even though coronary disease might not be such so complex. Absolutely. So uh, our team discussion is key. And uh, of course, in the PCI field, we had uh, a lot of advancements over the year uh, in terms of physiology, intravascular guidance, uh, stents, etc. What is state of the art in surgery uh, in 2023? Yeah, first of all, I would have to say that even though there is innovation and we know what kind of surgical strategies are promising and are uh, associated with improved outcomes, I have to say, unfortunately, they're underutilized, vastly underutilized. They're, these are the things that we've been discussing for many years now. Things like full arterial grafting. We know that patency of grafts is way superior if you're using double IMAs, for example, or maybe a radial artery, as opposed to a LAD plus vein grafts. That is something that we've known for a long time. Still, many surgeons are still reluctant to, uh, to follow that. Uh, uh, that uh, the, these techniques. Another technique would be off-pump surgery. We do know that there are adverse effects when you're using the heart-lung machine, especially when you're manipulating the aorta. And there are, there are uh, well-standardized protocols, surgical techniques to do off-pump uh, aortic no-touch full arterial grafting, which I think should be standard of care for many patients, at least for those that have a long life expectancy, so for younger patients. That's very important because we, as interventionists, sometimes uh, uh, think of cabbage as a yes or no. Cabbage, yes, cabbage, no. But there is cabbage and cabbage. So it's very important that the surgeon use all the uh, state-of-the-art techniques and the same apply for PCI, of course. There is PCI without IVUS and PCI with IVUS. And of course, we should uh, yeah. recognize that just for example. So uh, then in the our team discussion, we have, of course, uh, some patients who are necessary for cabbage, some patients that are necessary for PCI, and then the big uh, uh, box of patients that are uh, potentially amenable to both uh, yeah. treatments, no? So then this brings the question to the patient. Uh, uh, how do you feel that the approach to the patient uh, in such borderline situations should be in terms of informed consent? Well, I think the, the consent um, uh, a consultation with a patient is very, very important. The way you speak to the patient, the, the wording you choose. I think you should try as hard as possible to take a neutral stance as soon as there are more than one option, because apart from evidence, there are other drivers that can determine the therapy, right? It is, which is the patient wish. There might be a patient who 
if well informed uh, about maybe evidence against uh, one or other treatment modality, will still pick that one therapy because it fits his lifestyle, because there are certain personal circumstances that will drive him towards that. And I think it's just as justified as long as the patient is fully consented and is aware what his treatment choice means for him. So a great point, I totally agree. And perhaps we should also say that the patient should have time to digest the information. Yes. It's not easy, of course, to receive this diagnosis. Uh, and the decision should not be taken uh, right away in the catalog, otherwise it's bias, but at the bedside. Yeah. So thank you very much for this uh, uh, enlightening discussion. I hope uh, our audience uh, enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, from EuroPCR 2023. 20, uh,